Okay, so I'm going to do two examples and then you're going to have a go at these ones. So they both start off with the same thing. So I'm going to do my first difference, second difference over here. So it's going up 5, 11, 17, and 23. So it's going up 6, 6, and 6. Okay, so I'm going to use the method where we have that our second difference is 2a. So that means that 6 is equal to 2a. So that must mean that a is equal to 3. Then for my next one, which I think I did in blue, we said that 3a plus b is equal to that blue one, which is 5. So a is 3, so 3 times 3 is 9. 9 plus b equals 5, so b equals 5, take away 9, which is minus 4. And then our last part is that the first term is equal to a plus b plus c. So a plus b plus c is equal to 4. So 3 minus 4 plus c equals 4. So minus 1 plus c equals 4. So c equals 5. Meaning the nth term is 3n squared, which is the a, minus 4n plus 5. Okay, so that was method one. Let's see if we come up with the same thing from the comparison stuff that we've got. So we know it's going to be our sequence. Our sequence that we have goes 4, 9, 20, 37. I don't need to do all of the terms. And then I'm going to be doing our 3n squared because the second difference is 6. So we half that to get the 3. Now n squared for the first position, that's going to be 1 multiplied by 3. Then we're going to do 2 squared for the second position, which is 4, and then times it by 3. 3 squared is 9, times it by 3 is 27. 4 squared is 16, times it by 3 is 48. So we're going to do the sequence, subtract the 3n squared. So 4 take away 3 is 1. 9 take away 12 is minus 3. 20 take away 27 is minus 7. 37 minus 48 is minus 11. So when we do the nth term, we know that this one is 3n squared. We now just need to find the nth term of this one. So it looks like it is going down in 4s each time. It is going down in 4s which means it's going to be a minus 4n. And the previous one, if we were to work out what would have been before, would be a 5. So it's minus 4n plus 5. So recombining them and putting them back together, it is 3n squared minus 4n plus 5. 3n squared minus 4n plus 5. So we've got both of these methods ending up with the same answer. Let's try one more of these and then you can have a practice. So we're going to find the nth term of this one. We're going to do the same thing as before. We're going to do the first and second difference. So they have a difference of 0. That has been subtracted 1, subtracted 2, subtracted 3. Okay, so how are we going from the 0 to the minus 1? We're subtracting 1, subtracting 1, subtracting 1. Ah, interesting. So we've now got that 2a equals minus 1. So a is minus a half. Right, so we know that 2a is minus 1, so a is minus a half. That comes from this bottom layer that we've got here. Now the next one is that 3a plus b is equal to 0. So 3 times a half is minus 3 over 2, plus b equals 0. So b must be equal to 3 over 2. And then our last one is that the first term, the a plus b plus c, equals 1. So that's a plus b plus c equals 1. Well, minus a half plus 3 halves is 2 halves, which is 1. So 1 plus c equals 1, so c equals 0, meaning the formula is a half minus a half n squared plus 3 over 2n plus 0. Now this is where I think you're going to find method 1 is just so much better. So we're going to do the sequence. The sequence goes 1, 1, 0, minus 2. I'm not going to do all of them. And then I'm going to have to do the minus a half n squared. 
Well, n squared is for the first one. This is for 1, 2, 3, and 4. n squared is 1 times it by minus a half. n squared here is 2 squared, which is 4, and 4 times minus a half is minus 2. This is the third position where n is equal to 3, so that's 9 times minus a half, that's minus 9 over 2. And then this is the fourth position, which is 16 times minus a half, which is minus 8. So this one's not very fun. We'll do the sequence minus the minus a half n squared. So I'm going to do 1 minus minus a half. Let's just quickly put a dividing line in there. 1 minus minus a half is 3 halves. 1 minus minus 2, that's 1 plus 2. This is now 0 minus minus 9 over 2, that's 0 plus 9 over 2. And then minus 2 minus minus 8, that's minus 2 plus 8, which is 6. Wow, this is not easy to spot. If you prefer, you could see these as decimals, that's 1.53. 4.56, maybe decimals would have made this a bit easier. It's going up in 1.5s, so in terms of our nth term, we have our minus a half n squared, and for our sequence that we've got, it's going up in 1.5s each time, so it just looks like 1.5n, and the previous term would have been a zero. So putting these back together, it is minus a half n squared plus 1.5n, minus a half n squared plus 1.5, 3 over 2, and it is exactly the same, these two. So I'm hoping by having seen these two examples, you are going to start to think, okay, I need to memorize this, this, and this, because it's going to help me answer these questions. So I think you should try just these three questions that we've got here, and then we'll do some exam questions. Okay, pause the video and have a go. I'm going to do these and see if I can do the, the method where we have our 2a, 3a plus b, and now a plus b plus c. So in this one, it's going up 8, then it's going up 11, then it's going up 16, then is it going up 16? Yep, and then it is going up 20. Turns out I can't even do these because it's not going up 11, it is going up 12. So it's going up 4, 4, 4. Great, so 2a equals 4. That's coming from this first thing that we have got here. Then we're going to talk about the 8, and then we're going to talk about the minus 1. So that means that a is equal to 2. 3a plus b is equal to 8. 3 times 2 is 6, so 6 plus b equals 8, so b is equal to 2. a plus b plus c equals minus 1. So 2 plus 2 plus c equals minus 1. So c equals minus 1 minus 4, which is minus 5, meaning the nth term is 2n squared plus 2n minus 5. Now, of course, you could go and check this on your calculator. I'm not going to do that right now. But you could go into table mode. You could type this in with the first five terms, and you should get that. Okay, we're going to do the same here. See if we can go nice and quick. So it's going up 0, 2, 4, 6. It's going up 2, 2, 2. So the second difference, 2a, is 2, which means a is 1. The first difference, the 3a plus b, is going to be the 0. I guess I should continue with this highlighting for the consistency. 3a plus b is equal to 0, so that's 3 plus b equals 0, so b is minus 3. And then we're going to have a plus b plus c equals 8. 1 minus 3 plus c equals 8. So I'm going to do the 8 plus the 3, which is 11, minus the 1, which is 10. So c is equal to 10. So the nth term is going to be a n squared plus b n plus c. And I'm just going to move that up a bit here and just draw a line so it's clear that that's a different question. OK, I'm going to do this last one. Let's see what it's going up in. It's going up 5, 8, 11, 14. It's going up 3, 3, and 3. So the second difference is 3. The first difference is 5. The first term is 2. So 2a is equal to 3. 
meaning that a is equal to 3 over 2, or you could say 1.5. 3a plus b is equal to 5. So I'm going to do 3 times 3 over 2. That's going to be 9 over 2, because 3 times 3 is 9, and it's still going to be over 2. Plus b equals 5. So you can do this in your calculator, but 5 minus 9 over 2, that's 10 over 2 minus 9 over 2. b is equal to a half. And a plus b plus c is equal to 2. So 3 over 2 plus 1 over 2 plus c is equal to 2. Well, 3 over 2 plus 1 over 2 is 4 over 2. So 2 plus c equals 2. So c is equal to 0, meaning that the nth term is 3 over 2 n squared plus a half n plus 0. So I'll just do a final bit. This is the answer to the first question. This is the answer to the second question. And this is the answer to the third question. So I would highly, highly, highly recommend learning this one here. But sometimes people just don't like memorizing stuff like this. So they might prefer to have the intuition of this comparison method. But I think this second example here just shows that things can get really, really messy. So in the last video, I'm just going to do two exam style questions on this. Found this video helpful? Then why not drop it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. If you'd like the next video in the playlist, you can click here to be taken straight to it. And as always, wishing you the very best for all your studies.